Hi and welcome to the Australian Fishing Championships. I'm Pat Trinidad. And I'm Sophie Wood. And this week, round two of Australia's premier tournament fishing series comes to you from Queensland's playground, the Gold Coast. That's right, we're an hour south of Brisbane, the home of some of the most consistent brim fishing in the country. Now, last week saw our guys tackle the mighty Brisbane River. She gave us our fair share of triumphs and disappointments. So before we go anywhere this week, let's have a look at last week's action. Round one was battled out on the Brisbane River and it proved to be a very challenging event for all. Adam Reuter had a day he'd rather forget, unable to land anything. Steve Starling only bagged two keepers, struggling to come to terms with the blustery Queensland conditions. Ian Miller went one better than Starling, snaring three legals, but the weight wasn't enough to get him above Queenslander Jesse Lomas, who only bagged two. The weigh-in was a battle between local boy Tim Morgan and ex-pro surfer Chris Wright. Chris pulled out three legals, only to be pipped at the post by a jubilant Tim Morgan. Oh, it feels totally awesome. I think I was a bit of an advantage up here. I'm a Brisbane boy, born and bred, so uh, to get a win up here stands me in good stead for the rest of the season. So Morgan leads the championship after round one, followed by Wright, Lomas, Miller, Starling and Reuter. There you are, a stack of action from last week. Now I'm here with Jesse Lomas, 18 years old, currently third in the competition. Now Brisbane last week. Jesse, how do you feel you went? Okay, yeah, Brisbane was a good start for me. Um, firstly, the, uh, the six points for third place will, will really help me along the board. And also uh, snatching the rogue fish, that extra point um, could well, be the point that makes all the difference. Good luck today. Thank you, Jesse Lomas. Thanks good on you, mate. Now, the canals of the Gold Coast actually make the fishing conditions a lot different to last week for our pros compared to the Brisbane River. Gorgeous day, beautiful and sunny, beautiful place to be. So let's have a quick look at today's arena. Great brim fishing is a bit of a secret in the tourist haven of the Gold Coast, but to snare these laid-back Queensland brim, you're going to need to get your lure choice right. I'm going to uh, try and get a lot of my fish on and small plastics and then hopefully uh, we can get them up hitting on the surface so it should be some really exciting fishing. The backbone of this system is the Narang River. It's the artery that feeds the maze of canals and waterways with their fresh seawater. It's a bit of a rabbit warren. There's so many canals and everything but I've got a bit of a plan. Uh, hopefully it'll work. There are hundreds of canals and thousands of docks in this system, which equates to literally millions of brim. And the local Queensland teams are at a serious advantage. Jesse, the young gun Lomas, this is his backyard. He's going to do really well here. And Tim the Brim never misses out on the meringue. So I'm going to be uh, chasing those guys fairly hard. Don't forget the rogue fish. For round two, it's the mangrove jack. I wouldn't have a clue where a rogue fish lives here, mate. I don't even know my way around the second bend, so I'm just going to try hard. Remember, the longest mangrove jack for the day snags an extra championship point. Time now to head over to Matthew Campbell for round two's start. Thanks, Pat, and we're at the start for the AFC Outdoors Brim Pro Series round two from the Gold Coast. Beautiful day for fishing. There's Jesse Lomas, a local boy with local knowledge from Queensland. But before we get underway, let's recap the rules. We're fishing catch and release, looking for five fish, using soft and hard-bodied lures. Each boat has a live well on board, as the fish must be kept alive to be counted. The fish are weighed in, and the heaviest bag taking home 10 championship points. There's the club marine clock, seven hours for these pros to fish. And they're underway and they leave in championship order. Our leader from round one from Queensland, Tim Morgan in Team Mercury, followed by from New South Wales, Chris Wright in Team Quintrex. Third to get away is Jesse Lomas from Team Suzuki, also from Queensland. The New South Welshman, Ian Miller, next to get away from Team Mariner, followed by also from New South Wales, Steve Starling from Team Netspace. And we're off and racing. And finally, Adam Reuter, Team Hogsbreath to the arena for round two and we'll take a look at the map and this is just a small portion of the intricate canal system that makes up this part of the Gold Coast. Unlimited opportunities around the pylons and pontoons and that's exactly where our pros are headed now. It's a big day's fishing ahead. The local boys from Queensland know the Gold Coast very well. Ian Miller in fourth place. Jesse Lomas already thinking about where to fish and we'll find out exactly where these guys stop after the break. No fish here mate. Welcome back to the AFC Outdoors Brim Pro Series. This is Chris Wright and the decision on where to fish, all important early in the day. It'd be fishy because you've got plenty of structure. All the posts here, as you can see, are absolutely covered in oysters, which the Brim love to eat. 
they'll be around here somewhere. You've just got to find. You've just got to try and find a school of them. Well, he's right yep. in someone's front yard at the moment, and he's on. Nice well, this sprint. is a wonderful start for Chris Wright. Just a quarter of an hour into the competition, oh, just oh. needs to land the fish, and he's missed it. Oh, that is a fundamental mistake from Chris Wright. Far out. Bad luck, and he is disappointed because he knows it was his mistake. Now, here's Adam Reuter, who had a disappointing round one and looking to get off to a better start. Oh, there's a ton of brim on. Oh. Oh. Yep. Okay, now you're talking. Come here, young fella. Welcome to Hog's Breath. Table for one. Sure thing. Whew. One down. Four to go. And then some upgrades. Hog's Breath is away. <laughs> Reuter's first fish for the series. Nice to see him on the board. This is Jesse Lomas. Gone a lot further up the river. He's using the shake and retrieve method with a soft play stick and it's paid off for him after only half an hour. He's on, looking to get his first fish. The young Queenslander off to another good start. Just needs to get the fish in the boat and he just hoiks it in. Number one. Lovely, lovely. Here's the championship leader, local boy Tim Morgan. Just off this ladder, there's a few little ones. There's a few silver flashes of fish feeding. Oh, well, there's some bigger ones up that end. Just under an hour gone. Already with one fish yep. in the well. We'll show that shortly. And he's on for number two. Oh, yeah. That's a better broom. Won't even have to worry about measuring him. He's heaps bigger than the last one. Let's go and try and catch three more. Well, it's two down, three to go for Morgan. And let's go back to his first fish at just 7.18. So two inside the hour. Both Queenslanders off to a good start. Ian Miller now from Team Mariner, the New South Welshman. Nothing in the live well as yet. Now here's a change of tactic for Miller. Haven't seen this in the tournament so far. Just an hour in, he's using a hard-bodied surface lure. Just have to retrieve it, and there's plenty of fish around on the surface, as you can see. Oh, and it's paid off for him. That tactic has really worked because he's on for his first fish of the morning, and the type of lure he's been using was very common here on the Gold Coast. So he's done his research. He's obviously had a chat to a couple of the locals. Now it's just a question of getting the fish in the net and in the boat, and that'll be his first keeper of the day. Not a bad start within the hour for Ian Miller, and it's a good-sized fish, and Team Mariner on the board with one. Here's Chris Wright, Team Quintrex. Remember, about an hour ago, he butchered his first fish. It would have been the perfect start for him. So he just needs to change his luck. 8.20, yep. Aaron 20 into the competition. Well, this should be his first fish. No problems with the net this time. All right, I just got my first fish. It's, it's 20 past eight, so it's taken a while. Just put it in behind this boat in front of me here and let the current drift it down into the shadows and brim came out and nailed it. Yep. Oh! Pulled the hooks. There's obviously a few fish in under this boat. Back to Jesse Lomas from Team Suzuki. Already with three fish and now looking to make it four. He is setting a cracking pace at the moment, the young Queenslander. Just over two hours gone. He really is the man to catch today. Look at the technique there, just putting the net between the legs, swapping the rod with the hands so he can keep control of the fish. Not controlling it into oh, the net in. though, but he does it. He makes it four. <laughs> oh, that was nervous. We'll take a look back at a couple of earlier fish for Jesse. His second fish coming at 8.38. Not a big fish, just on the 23 centimetre limit, but good enough. And then his third fish just 14 minutes later. No need for the net there. Three fish, Paul drives it into the boat. He's going beautifully. Now here's our first look at Team Net Space and Steve Starling. No fish in the well. Oh, look at that one. There's one just cruising in here. Up oh, and again, and again. Come on, come on, eat it. Don't play with your food. Oh. Well, this amazing surface lure action is really teasing Starling. You've certainly got plenty of brim there, but they're too well fed, I think. Frustration for Team Netspace. Now, breaking news, this is incredible. Team Hogsbreath and Adam Reuter, an on-course official has spotted something. He's been sighted with a major rule breach. We're crossing now to tournament director Steve Morgan for the official word. Very disappointed with Adam Reuter today. He wasn't wearing his life jacket when he was planing his boat, and at no life jacket, no points. He's out of there today. What a controversial finish for Adam Reuter, but this is Tim the Brim Morgan. There's a couple on the lure now. Oh, yep. Oh, straight in there. Very next. Oh, hit, hit, hit. Oh, yep. You hit it too. The big one hit it. Oh, 
Three down, two to go. Got about another four and a half hours. Plenty of time left for Morgan to fill his bag. He's very confident and he's straight in with another cast in the same spot. Yeah, there's a lot of room in there too. Going to hit, yep, hit. Yep, there he is. Fantastic fishing from Morgan. Two from two and he continues to set the pace. This one feels a little bit better. On the very next cast, it's now four down. Still four and a half hours fishing left. Well, that's four of our five pros on the board, except for this man, Steve Starling. Can he turn it around? We'll find out after the break. Welcome back to the AFC Outdoors Brim Pro Series. You're watching Steve Starling from New South Wales using all his vast experience to fish the stormwater outlet. He knows Brim like to feed here. Three hours in, looking to get on the board. He is very experienced. He won't like being down near the bottom. Ew! Good fish. Good fish. Ah, oh, that's more like it. Oh yeah, he's a good fish. <sighs> Just gotta hope it's not a trevally now, but it feels like a brim. Oh yes, it's a brim and it's a beauty. I'm a happy camper, I will be when I get it in the net. Yes! On the board and in style. I wouldn't mind five like that. Over now to Ian Miller from Team Mariner. Just the one fish so far. We haven't seen a lot of him today. But let's go live now down on the river to talk to him and find out how he's going. Ian, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Ian, you haven't fished the Gold Coast a lot. Are you finding it any easier than the Brisbane River last week? Well... A little bit, but I've still only amassed about five hours fishing here in my entire life, so I'm, I'm, I'll be happy if I just don't get lost. <laughs> Mate, the conditions look perfect out there at the moment. I hear you pulled out your surface lure. That's right, yeah. Oh, the weather conditions are great, probably even a little bit too good for um, this time of day with this low tide. The fish are really spooky, but uh, I've just seen them everywhere. They're like rabbits today down here, and um, I've got one in the well, and I've, I've lost about three that have pulled the hooks, and I've seen about 8,000, so <laughs> hopefully it'll get better. Yeah, I hope so too, mate. Good luck. OK, thanks. Great to be able to talk to our pros out there in the thick of the action. Speaking of action, that's Jesse Lomas. That's a rogue fish. Mangrove Jack. It's the rogue fish for this comp. He's only an absolute pup, but uh, if no one else catches any today, or catches any smaller than that, I'll uh, get the bonus point with that one. Nice work from Jesse Lomas once again. Back with Ian Miller from Team Mariner. Just the one fish so far. But he said he's seen plenty, he's seen over 8,000, and he's seeing plenty here. Look at this amazing surface fishing. The main attraction of this style of fishing is to just watch the fish take the bait. And oh, he's not ducking a flying fish there, he's dropped it. Jesse Lomas, he's on. That's his forte, fishing near the pylons. He's already got four, this will be five. And remember, he also has the rogue fish. Also, he has the wake of that boat going past to contend with. A little backhand technique with the net. Oh, good work by the young gun in the boat for number five. That's the five. Back with Steve Starling, still at the stormwater outlet. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there almost had to be something on the end of that stormwater pipe, and there was. <sighs> Come on. This might be my second keeper, I think. Yeah, he'll go the, he'll go the 23. Be really nice if he went in the net. That's the go. Ooh, might have to put this one on the lie detector. Yeah, he's about two millimeters over 23. You beauty. That's number two from the experienced man from New South Wales. This red stuff all over my hands is spike it garlic scent. And I'm definitely seem to be getting some more bites in this slightly dirty water. And so I'm going to stick with it now anyway. It's a confidence thing, if nothing else. Sneaky move by Starling, but it's working. Yo. No, get out of there. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is hairy stuff on three pound line, this close to structure. Oh, come on, mate. Right. Get us out of here. Well, that garlic scent for Starling, giving him the smell of success. Back to Chris Wright, having a quiet day today after running second in Brisbane last week. Got him. Big brim. Well, he's got him all right, but that is a very tricky method. 
over the top of the rope, right next to the boat, has to be very carefully. Could cut his line. Yes. Oh, that was just oh, nerve-wracking. Yes. I deliberately threw it over that rope so I could just sit there and jig it up and down like a tea bag. So I'd just sit in the strike zone and I was getting hit, I was getting hit, I was getting hit, and finally one just went clunk. Clunk's in for number three. Let's go back and see his second fish. We didn't see it earlier. Right on midday. This time, no problems whatsoever with the net. To Steve oh. Starling, who's in a real purple patch at the moment. Yeah, got him. Just leaning back. You can see the action on the rod. And whatever he's doing is certainly working. He's making a real charge at the leaders. Oh, yeah. That's what we want. That's number four for Starling. And with just over 90 minutes remaining, only one more needed to fill his bag. Not big, but big enough. Over to Tim Morgan now, just buy some private moorings there, in and around the boats, already with a full bag. OK, you can see a few little brim feeding up under the boat there. There, there he is. Great opportunity here for Morgan, with an hour to go, an opportunity for our first upgrade. If this fish is heavier than one of the five he already has, he can swap it over. With that in the net, let's take a look at his fifth keeper. Good boat side struggle here. Good work by Morgan to get it in just 20 minutes ago. He is the man to catch once again. But the man chasing him is Steve Starling, just one fish behind. Yes, that's not a bad fish either. Oh, definitely worth sticking the net under. Long skinny fish, might go the 23. Wouldn't that be good? Uh, he's not going to. Oh, wow. He goes exactly 23. Full bag now for Starling. Over to Ian Miller, who's taking a bit of a risk here late. He pulls that fish into the boat. It's his second one for the day, but the risk for him is the time. Just 15 minutes remaining before he has to get back to the starting point. Now, for every one minute that he's late, he'll be docked 50 grams of his total bag weight. A calculated risk by Miller, given that he only had one fish in the live well. Now it's a race in time, but it may be too little too late. Who will clean up on the Gold Coast? We'll find out after the break. Don't want any extra weight on there. Welcome back to the AFC Outdoors Brim Pro Series. Round two, we're at the weigh-in with Steve Starling with a full bag, a great afternoon for him. Not so, Adam Reuter, unfortunately disqualified. We caught up with him earlier on. I'm really disappointed. I'm, I, I, was, I would have cried, but there's too many guys around at the time. Just shocking. Disappointment for Reuter, obviously no points for him, and at the weigh-in so far, Miller with two fish, Ryder snared three, Tim the Brim Morgan with a full bag limit of five is our current leader, but Steve Starling now, in what has turned into a state of origin battle, the New South Welshman up against the Queenslanders of Lomas and Morgan, 1.95 is the weight to beat, here he is with Pat. Ah, oh, feels good to get five, I tell you. Uh, you had a better day today? Much better day today, although I tell you what, it was slow getting started, and then I hit a real purple patch this afternoon and got quite a few fish. Time now for the weigh-in. Some good sized fish there. Let's take a look. 2.25, our new leader. Hey, I'm happy with that mate. Thank you. He is a crowd favourite, is Steve Starling, but there is one man that can beat him. The 18-year-old Tyro, Jesse Lomas. Time for his bag to weigh in. Looks pretty good. There's one punter who's very keen on what's in his bag. Lomas also with a full limit of five. Starling knows that. He knows it's going to be tight. Now, tell us about your day out there on the water. OK, I had a um, really good day today. Um, caught a lot of fish, most were under size. Right. I was pretty fortunate to get my five. Um, only got five legal, so I was pretty oh, lucky, okay. I think. What a great young talent he is. It's the moment of truth now for Team Suzuki. 2.25 is Steve Starling's weight. Ooh, and that nice. is enough for victory for Team Net Space and Steve Starling. Great performance by the New South Welshman on Queensland waters. Jesse Lomas will be happy, and this is why. He picked up the bonus point for the rogue fish to get to nine. Morgan in third place with six, Wright with four, Miller with two, Reuter another donut. But our winner is Steve Starling. It really comes down to how you fish on the day, and I actually didn't fish well at all to begin with. I was trying too many different things, and then I just locked in on one thing that worked, concentrated on that. Uh, Jesse did so well today, you know, any of those guys can do it, and it does put the pressure on being up in that top three, though. Let's check the leaderboard after round two, and Tim Morgan is just ahead of Jesse Lomas by virtue of his win in round one. Lomas, two rounds, two rogue fish, two bonus points. Steve Starling is into that top three with 12, followed by Wright, Miller and Reuter.
Well, big day on the Gold Coast for round two at this stage. Tim Morgan and Jesse Lomas equal first on the leaderboard. Those rogue fish, of course, coming in very handy for Jesse. That's right. And unfortunately, another disappointing day for Adam Reuter. No fish mm. last week, disqualified today, but hopefully better luck next week in New South Wales. That's right. Next week it's New South Wales. Steve Starling's pretty happy about it. We'll see you then. If you have aspirations of being an AFC pro angler in the future, grab a copy of the 2004 Tournament Angler Guide. With all the tips, techniques and gear you need detailed inside, it's a must read for any competitive angler. Available in your newsagent now.